All right, one more time for those of you guys watching at home. Today, we're going to be talking about how to go from showing homes to the offer table. Um, just by a show of hands, guys, how many of you have experienced buyers that you're working with where you're going out there and you're showing them a ton of property and you just can't seem to get them to move forward to write an offer? <laughs> Pretty much everybody, right? Okay, so it's a common problem. So we're in the right room, right? It's the right room, right? Training today? Perfect. Almost everyone showed their hand. And if you haven't gotten there yet, um, you will get there, right? Because you're going to be showing homes pretty soon when you, as you start booking appointments. And that is seems that seems to be a common problem, right? Is there's uh, what I see is there's certain agents that follow a certain system, a certain process, and it seems like they're able to just go out, show homes for maybe one or two weekends, and then they're writing offers, and then they get them in contract. And then we have other agents who it seems like they're just showing homes all the time, forever and ever and ever. And for some reason, they're not able to get their clients to move forward, right? And a lot of it has to do with um, how you set up the relationship from the beginning. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, a lot of it has to do with how you set up your leadership and authority in the relationship with the client as well to get them to want to listen to you and trust you. Um, and then the other thing, too, is a lot of times we're not following a duplicatable process. We're just going out there. We're showing homes. Bless you. We're going out there, we're showing homes and we're kind of leaving it up to the client to let us know when it's time to write an offer, right? And so if there's anything that you can take away from this training today is if you want to move clients forward from showing homes to writing offers, you need to put yourself in the power position. You need to be in the leader position and you need to lead them to writing the offer. It cannot be like, hey guys, what do you think about this property? where you're kind of leaving it up to them to determine what happens next. That's the biggest mistake that people make. And, but if you think about it, it's, there's a reason why people do that because it's kind of human nature. You go show a property. Hey, what do you guys think? Right? Like that's kind of like the first thing that comes to your mind, but that's the biggest mistake that people make by asking, what do you think? Because what you're doing is you're turning it over to the client to just say, yeah, no, nah, right? Like <laughs> you're leaving it to them now, right? They're, they're in the power seat instead of you saying, Hey guys, based off your criteria, based off what you asked me for, we need to now move forward and try to write an offer on this property, right? And so there's a difference. So we're going to walk through that and how to, how to build that trust so that your clients can want to take those next, next steps and take your advice. Um, so I'm going to go over a document called the Home Showing Evaluator. It's an extremely simple document, guys. And then we'll do some role play. Um, it's also, an, I also sent it to you guys. I emailed it to everybody as well. So you guys should already have it in your email where you could just print it. Um, and I have some copies here that I'll pass out. Um, but before we go into passing out the copies, I just want to explain what this is all about. And so the home showing evaluator on the surface, it just looks like a document, right? It's just a simple document. Um, where at the top, it has the client's name. It has their top five must haves. And then for the properties that we are looking at, it has a score one through seven and some notes. So you guys might look at this and say, oh, that doesn't look too fancy. That looks like, you know, something super simple. Um, but what it is, guys, it's a system. It's a way that we do things. It's a way that we move people down the funnel, right? So if you, if you can take anything from this is that you have to have a duplicatable system. So if, if Brian was my client, I'm meeting with Brian, I need to walk them down the funnel, the sales process, the same way that I would walk Dan if Dan was my other client. I can't say like, well, I'm going to do it a little bit different for Brian. I'm going to do it a little bit different from Dan. I'm going to let Brian run the show on this one. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to like make Dan write an offer on this one. Like, that's just not the way it works, right? Like you won't have a consistent um, result if you're kind of winging it and kind of doing it different for every single client, right? So this is where systems come into play. The same reason that we have a buyer consultation and there's a certain way that we present our information. There's a certain way that we get them to sign at the end. That's all like thought out, right? That's all systematized. It isn't like, hey, let's just do it with this client and not do it with this client. If you follow the proven process, you will move more clients down the line. Now, can we guarantee that every client is going to move forward and every client's going to close? Absolutely not. But can a system increase the likelihood of the same thing happening over and over, right? 
absolutely right so i want you guys to get your minds into we need to have systems in place right there needs to be a system and look at this as a system because if you don't look at this as a system then you're not going to do it like you'll listen to this training you'll get some like oh that's a cool idea and then you'll go back to kind of doing it the way you've been doing it right and so any questions so far on like the importance of the system in the process cool um okay so the goal for you guys is that every time you show a home, you bring this document with you, simple page. So if I were you, I'd print a bunch out, I'd have them in my car. And if I'm going to go show homes, I'm doing the same exact process with every single buyer that I work with. And so, and then you want to explain to your buyer, Hey, Mr. Buyer, um, as part of our process with PRG, we have a proven system that has helped us focus more time and energy on the properties that match our criteria and less time and energy on the ones that are just going to waste our time and they're not even things that we would move forward on. We want to make this process as smooth and as efficient as possible for you so that when we do identify a property that meets your needs, we're able to act quickly and we're able to give you the best chance of success on this property because we're in a really competitive market. And chances are that if, if this one meets all your needs and you really like it, there's probably like two other, three other buyers that are going to show up like in, within the hour that are going to see it and they're going to feel the same way. Um, right. So as part of our process, here's what we're going to do. We need to be really clear on what your must haves are. And you should have already had this conversation in your consultation. But the reason I put it on this document is because it's important to remind people of what it is that they want. Uh, let me ask you a question. Have you had buyers where they told you they want one thing and then you go show them a property and now they're like asking for like other stuff? Or they're looking at, if they wanted a four bedroom, but then they're sending you like three bedroom properties to go look at, right? Or they told you they want something on this side of town, but then they're like saying, hey, can we go look at this one? It's on the opposite side of town, right? So what happens guys is buyers like change their mind also. So our job as the agent and as their advisor is to like get them back to center of what they really want. And if they do go outside of that, then you got to ask them, well, hey, is this now your new criteria so that we can add it to the list, right? So um, the top five must-haves is just you being really clear on what it is that they want. So what I would say is I'm going to use Dan as an example. We go meet, maybe I talked to Dan on the console already. He already told me his five must-haves, but now I'm meeting him in person to show him some homes. And I just want to reconfirm your top five must-haves. So Dan, I uh, just want to reconfirm with you. Um, you're looking to stay in South San Jose. That's one of your criteria, right? Your budget is still about 1.5 million or so plus or minus. Yeah. Okay. About 1.5 million, um, is your budget. And then you need at least four bedrooms. Is that correct? Four bedrooms, two bath. Four bedroom, two bath. Okay. Um, and then anything else specifically about the property that you need? Backyard. Backyard? Big backyard. Big backyard. Okay. Big backyard. Okay. Big backyard. Um, any other things like any any things that are deal breakers for you like the house has to have this or any bonuses that you would like no south facing no south facing perfect <laughs> okay okay dan perfect like this is really good dan like now i know I, i'm a little more clear on exactly what you want so dan let me just reiterate want something in south san jose want something to be within you know 1.5 um, I'll say maybe max is like 1.7 based off, you know, what we, we talked to the lender about, um, at least four better two back, right. Something with the big backyard. Um, and then something that's not South facing. Okay, perfect. So, um, if we go out there and we find something that meets all of this and it matches the criteria that's within your budget, then, um, we're going to move forward and try to put an offer on a property like this. Yeah. Right. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So what did I just do right there? Well, that's what I've been looking for. What'd you say? I got commitment from them, right? Um, I got commitment. That's the big thing is I said, hey, this is what you want, right? And if I find this for you, then we're going to move forward and write, a, write an offer. Are we on the same page, Dan, right? And obviously you can like, I'm shortening it right now. You can conversate a little bit more, elaborate a little bit more. You can have this conversation on the buyer consult as well. Um, and then say, hey, Dan, if for some reason anything changes with this criteria, or there's an update, 
let me know so that we can acknowledge it. And now we're looking at properties that fit your current criteria. Is that fair, Dan? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I got, let me stop right there. Questions on this part, because this is the part where I might lose some people. Is it simple? Okay. So by a show of hands, how many people are doing this exact process right here? You're getting their criteria and then you're getting the commitment. Hey, if I find you this property, you're going to be ready to make a competitive offer. Nobody, right? Um, it's usually like, hey, let's go look at this property. Well, hey, what do you think? You guys want to write an offer, right? Like that's usually what happens, right? So in this scenario, guys, we are saying, hey, this is what you told me you want. Now, when we do find it, I have permission to move you forward to write the offer on the property, right? Um, that's the big difference. It's just a mindset and it's just you consulting them and you kind of taking that power position, right? In a professional way. Um, and so the next step from there is what I would do is I would establish that. And then I would even email this to them or text it to them. Right. And there's even a template that we have in Firepoint, which I can show to you right now, where I've already put this in a template. I'm just going to click on a random lead here and I'll show you where it's at in the email template. So this guy, Juan, if I go to email and I go to templates, top five must haves. So the email. Please confirm top five must-haves for your new home. Jimmy and Dan, uh, Jennifer or Dan, per our conversation, in close, please find some options for your, uh, please find some home options for your review. So this is where you can have already searched for homes that match that criteria, and you can put the links to those in there, right? Here's the links. Please provide me with any feedback so I can better narrow down the search for you. Also, below are the top five, five must-haves that we discussed in order to make an offer on your dream home. Please reply back confirming these are the needed features you need in your next home. Here's the criteria, maybe a little bonus, right? And then the key part, when we find the above dream home, we will be ready to discuss terms for writing a winning and favorable offer. That's the key part is Dan, when we find this home, then we're gonna go ahead and now discuss how to write a winning and favorable offer. Lastly, in the event any of these needs change, please let me know so we can discuss and revise the search. Thank you. Please do not hesitate to call me. Notice at the top, it says, please confirm, right? So you need to get some sort of confirmation from them, whether you emailed it to them and they say, yes, it's documented. Whether you text this to them and they respond, yes, this is what I'm looking for. It's documented. And then last case scenario is you just talk to them and they say, yes, this is what I want. Um, the only problem with just verbal is that it's not documented, right? And it's going to be hard for you to remember that. So even if you talk to them and they confirm it, always back it up with sort of written communication, text or email, right? So that you can go back like, hey, guys, I just want to make sure this is what we're still looking for. This is what you guys had, had told me. And this is going to stop those conversations of, of like, or those occurrences where they're asking you to see properties that don't fit the criteria. Then you got to go back to this. Well, hey, I thought this was your criteria. Has something changed? If something has changed, let me know so I can update our search, right? Um, okay. So now what I'm doing is when I meet with them, I would have already had that conversation, but I'm just going to write that in here because I want to remind them while I'm out there showing homes. Because if I do see the home and it meets everything, then I'm pushing them to the next step, which is to write an offer. Right. Um, and there's going to be a lot less resistance at that point because like, hey, this is what you told me you wanted. This is what we found you. What's stopping us from moving forward now at this point? Right. OK. So here's part two of this system right here is part two is how you score properties and how you rate properties. Right. So. When you go out and look at properties you need to have some sort of scoring or rating system. What's up, bro? Um, because if you don't, then it's all going to be up to like interpretation at that point, whether it met the criteria, whether it didn't, whether it was nice, whether it was not nice, 
you need to have something on there that's a, some, some sort of scoring system. So what I'm going to tell the client is, hey, Dan, um, the way I typically work with my clients and how we make this process most efficient is anytime we go see a property, we're going to give it a score. And we're going to give it a score from one to seven. A seven is probably like the unicorn. We're not going to find many of those. That's like your dream home. It meets every single thing down to the T. Those are hard to find. What we're probably going to see is more like fives and sixes where it meets most of the stuff. Um, and if we happen to find your dream home, then that's going to be a bonus, right? I want to also position like realistic expectations. And here's the reason why I'm doing that is because in our market where it's limited inventory, is there a chance that they're going to have to compromise on their yeah. criteria, right? Like it may have like four out of the five. And so if it has four out of the five, I got to push them forward because for it to hit five out of five, what are the chance? And then to win that property, like what are the chances in our market right now? It's slim, right? It's slim. The longer they wait, the higher the prices go up, right? So I already want to position this as if there's going to be a little bit of compromise there. And I also want to not waste time on properties that just aren't even in the running. So anything that's a five, a six, or a seven, that's offer zone. Anything that's a one through four, let's not even like spend one more minute in the property, right? So let's say like I'm out showing homes. I'm writing this on there, one, two, three, Main Street. And I'm going to ask them, hey, like based off of one to seven, right? Five, six, and seven means like it meets most of your criteria. This is a home we would strongly consider. One through four is like, it's just, it's not up to par at all. I wouldn't consider it. What do you rate one, two, three Main Street, um, Dan, right? Yeah, that one was probably like a four. Okay. Um, what would make it a five? Well, if it was in a different neighborhood. Okay, well, we can't change the neighborhood, right? So let's just not even. Now, if they're like, hey, if it had new paint, that would make it a six. Okay, then that's something that I can work with, right? We can work that out. Like, hey, I can get you a quote on paint. It's going to cost you, you know, 10 grand to paint the inside and outside. But if it's like, hey, it doesn't have the right layout or the rooms are too small, I can't really do much about that, right? So this is where you want to ask a little bit of questions on, okay, it's at a four. What would make it a five or a six? And is that something that we can control? And if it's not, okay, then it's a four. Okay, now we looked at 223 Main Street, right? What'd you give that one? Yeah, that one was about a six. That one had like pretty much everything we needed, a little compromise here and there, but that one was about a six. Um, and yeah, we like that property. Okay, great. Now we looked at one more, right? We looked at three, four, five Main Street. What was that one? Yeah, no way. That one stunk. It wasn't South facing, the rooms are too small. It just wasn't in the right school district. It wasn't what we thought it was after, you know, based off the photos, that one's like a three. Okay, great. So out of the three properties that we looked at today, Dan, it seems like 223 Main Street is the one that's in offer territory. And just to confirm like our, our criteria is, you know, South San Jose, which it is, this one's listed for about 1.4. 1, 1. It's probably gonna go a little bit higher and fall somewhere in your price range. It has the four beds and actually two and a half baths. So it has a, one extra bath for you. Backyard, you love the backyard, right? It's completely remodeled. It's huge the way you want it. It's not south facing. And then the bonus is you said you wanted something that's moving ready. This one's moving ready, right? So I would say like, this is, I agree with you. This is a six. So based off of that, we need to now meet and talk about next steps of writing an offer. So what I want to do now, Dan, is uh, let's go back to my office right now. If you guys have some time. Or if not, if you guys want to go grab something to eat, let's jump on a Zoom call after. And then we're going to go over the next steps of writing an offer on this property, right? And by that time, I'll, I'll have to talk to the listing agent. I'll get disclosures. I'll run some comps. And then we'll go from there. That's pretty much it, guys, right? Like that's, that's how you do it, right? Versus you go show them, all right, guys, well, what would you guys think of the, all the properties, right? And so you do never want to use the, what do you think? You want to say, hey, based off what you told me, here's what I think. Are you in agreement? It's just a different frame of mind, right? This is what you told me you wanted. This is what I observed. This is what I saw. What's the score we gave it? Here's what I recommend now.
Now we got to move forward and go write an offer. That's you taking ownership. That's you being a leader in this process. That's you moving them forward to get what they want. Now, some of you guys may be saying, well, oh, that sounds a little too pushy. Raise your hand if that, sound, if that comes off a little too pushy for you. That's fine if it does. Raise your hand if like you can see how someone might think like that's a little too pushy. Okay, there we go, right? Now, you got to remember, guys, that being pushy or persuasive, if it's for the right reasons, it's okay, right? If they told you this is what they want and you know that if they don't jump on this opportunity, the houses are going to be $50,000 more next month and then $100,000 more in two months and I need to push these people and I need to like use their info back against them to have them make a decision, you're helping them get what they want. You're looking out for their interest. Now, if you're trying to persuade them to buy something that just doesn't make sense for them or it's not the criteria or anything like then yeah, you're not doing something right. So in sales, to be a good salesperson, you do have to be persuasive. You do have to identify people's motivation and you do need, you do need to push them when the time is right. And if it's for the right reasons, right? And I find like a lot of agents, especially agents that are new in their sales career, they're not comfortable with that because they're afraid if they push too much, what are they afraid of? If they push too much, lose the, lose the client, right? That's, that's what goes through people's minds, whether they want to admit that or not. Like people think like, oh, like, I don't want to rub them the wrong way or I don't want to like come off too aggressive or I don't want to scare them away because, you know, this is a lot of money on this deal, right? But what happens if you don't push them to make the right decision? Yeah, I mean, they're going to go away anyways. Right? Because they're going to waste your time, Right? They're going to be the ones like dictating everything that's happening, right? They're going to stress you out. They're not going to buy a property. The properties are going to go higher in price and they're going to end up paying more if they finally do pull the trigger on buying a property at that point, right? So if you don't push them when the opportunity is in front of you, you're going to lose them anyways. And it's going to be a worse situation for them if you don't seize that opportunity right there. So when you have them right there and you know that that's the right property and you know it meets their criteria and you genuinely believe like this is a good home for them based off what they told you they want, you have to push. You have to remind them of why we're looking at this property, what their criteria is, and you have to use this process of elimination by using the, the one to seven system. Mm -hmm. He pushed them out of their comfort level on the purchase price, mm -hmm. but it was everything they needed. So they were a little iffy at the beginning. I was a little iffy too, but that's exactly what Dan did. But on the purchase price, of it. when it came time to negotiate the price, to negotiate the price yeah, he had, he added all of this, but just to reflect on the price. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Like this is obviously when we're showing and then we're trying to get them to write an offer. But when it's when you're in counter offers and now they got to increase their price and all that stuff, you're going to want to go back to their motivation. And right. That's exactly it. That was the key because it's easy for the client to think that you're persuading them just to go up in price without a reason. But Dan kept it back to like, hey, it has the bedrooms that you're needing. It has an updated kitchen. It's move-in ready. You're really not going to have to do anything to it. The inspections are super clean. If we pass on this and we don't get it, you're going to end up paying that price point, if not higher. Absolutely. The Redfin thing. Then you, you brought up like the investment potential on this property, right? Which is which is adding a whole nother layer to it, right? This is their wants and needs. But now when you add in like from a financial standpoint, how much properties are appreciating and stuff like that. And that was key because they had their wants and needs. Yeah. To the team. But now it was convincing them to feel comfortable paying that higher price. Point. Yeah. And so uh, what I want you guys is we're going to do some role play with this in a second, but I want to also hear from you guys what sort of objections you're getting right now from clients not wanting to move forward after you show a home, what sort of objections are you getting currently 
and how can we figure out maybe how can we use this to handle those objections? Like, go ahead. The interest rate is too high. So you're getting that objection after you show a home? Okay, so um, I want to isolate what we're talking about right now, right? What you're talking about is more, that's probably more like when you're trying to book an appointment. I'm talking about this whole scenario right here is you've already met with the client, you're showing homes already, right? So they already got pre-approved. They already know their budget. They already know the payments. We're showing homes. And now I'm trying to get them from showing that home. I toured homes all Saturday. How do I get them to route right now write an offer? That's That's all we're training on right now, right? Um, so is there any objections you guys are getting after you've showed homes and you're trying to get them to write the offer is what are any other objections or feedback you're getting? Yeah. Was there anything related to this training? Honestly, it was like a personal situation with the okay. client. So I don't think anything that left deep. Okay. Okay. So let me ask, so who showed homes in this past week? Okay. Francisco, you showed homes when? Uh, Sunday and yesterday. Okay. So what was the outcome of those showings? Yeah, everything was in green too. Um, Sunday, they were definitely starting to search, so I'm getting a feel of like what there is. It's one of the words, there's something in the space or not, or there's something looking for something that So why, so if you showed homes, did they like any of the homes? They did, but um, uh, the two that we saw, for example, on Sunday, mm -hmm. they had the offer they wanted on Tuesday, they're getting sleep on it, right? Um, they wanted to look at more just to have their offer to open. They're not in a rush either, so I get that. We didn't really have the expectation from the get-go. It was just more so just to like get them out there, to get them excited and to see what's out there. So... That's what I'm doing at least with them. But there's no section. Yeah. Okay. So what, what I what goes through my mind is like you showed them homes, they like the homes. Why didn't we write an offer? Right? Why didn't we go to offer? That's what goes through my mind. And you said a couple of things. They're not in a rush. Um clients telling you they're not in a rush. Let me just tell you guys that's that's a lie, right? Like you would not get in your car, go drive all the way, look at property, spend the whole day, and not be in a rush, right? Like if you're out there shopping for homes, guys, if you find the right home, they're going to buy, right? So I would completely like eliminate that out of my mindset and out of my uh, vocabulary of not in a rush. Um, I think that's just one tip. I would go back to what is their criteria? Does this home meet the criteria? And if it does, then I'm pushing, hey, I, I think we need to now discuss writing an offer on this property. Yeah. I did ask that, but um, I said it's also kind of personal. They're going through a succession. They're eating um, just like the partner she she went on her visa. She was getting a side like a month or two months, so she feels comfortable with the uh, the way it works. This is just more so like me being generous enough to be like, hey, you know what? Let's see what's out there and see how you feel about this, like in this kind of area, because they were they were completely opposed to it. So it's all like, well, why don't we get a feel for it? Okay. Um, so I guess it's for me with these clients specifically, it's kind of like going through like that of like two steps. Okay. So let's just, so let's differentiate because now, now that you're giving us more info, that's a different story. Yeah. If they're not ready to buy because they're not qualified yet 
and they have things that they got to get in place, then that's a different story, right? Yeah. Um, but if your client is qualified, they're looking at homes, it meets all the criteria, we need to write an offer, right? That's and really quick, guys. Uh, probably I would say 90% of you guys have showed property and 90% of you guys have a qualified buyer, right? Now, now we may be this weekend, we have these unique situations, but I've talked to all you guys where you guys have a buyer that is qualified. But I, what I'm seeing that this right here takes away that guesswork, right? And I think that that's the big part, Enrique. What I'm seeing is if we implement this, we're basically doing all the work up front. Right, we're doing all the work up front, making sure they check these box boxes. So after that Sunday show, and you're saying, "Hey, Mr. Customer, we looked at these five, right? Now, now let's 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 compare it to the list that we have." Yeah. But I think this is a big takeaway, guys, because all of us in here have showed qualified buyers, but we're not able to take them to 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 write in an offer. And I think that's the question that Enrique has to ask you guys is not even this weekend in general, what, what, what has been the hurdle? And you guys may raise your hand and say, this is the hurdle, Enrique, this is it. I did not get clear on what their expectations were. Yeah. I did not get clear on why, you know, the, the other question that I, I don't know if Enrique touched on this is like, what would stop you from writing an offer if we hit all these things? Yeah. Right. So we can, we can get in front of that hurdle immediately. Right. So I think this right here clarifies a lot of it, but this needs to be a practice. Like Enrique is saying. Yeah. It needs to be a practice guys. And that's where the system comes into place. Right. So what we're going to do right now, guys, I'm going to add, um, how many, I'm even going to add this to the sheet just to even remind you guys, right. The closing, the closing thing. Because what I'm trying to do, what I want you guys to take away, I'm trying to make this as simple and like take the guesswork out, right? And if you just follow this, and of course, you guys might like elaborate a little bit more, you put your own little spin on it, but don't completely deviate from the plan, right? Like you need to stay within this foundation. If you're going to add you know, additional stuff to it, that's perfectly fine. But if you just follow this process guys and you do this over and over and you, you get it down and you get it refined and you get it memorized, you will move more clients forward from showing to writing an offer. Right. I think this helps hold the buyer accountable too, right? Exactly. It does hold them accountable. Right. Because if not guys, you, what will happen is you will have buyers like, think about this. Sometimes the buyer is their first time buying a home most of the time, right? A lot of first time buyers. For you guys, you guys dealt with clients over and over. You've seen this. So a lot of times they don't know what they don't know. They may think like, well, I'm going to wait because the, the, be the uh, better property is going to pop up. They don't realize that by waiting, it's going to cost them more money, right? They, they don't know what they don't know. So a lot of times they're just kind of like trying to figure this thing out. And that's where you need to come in as the advisor and say like, this is how the process goes. This is the system that allows us to win more offers. This is why we have over 500 five-star reviews. This is how we're able to save you money in the long run because the less properties that we look at and the faster we can get you in, into the right home, the uh, quicker that you start building equity and you start, you start gaining wealth over time. Versus if it takes me three months because we're all over the place, now your home just cost you 50, 75 grand more, right? So this is going to give us clarity so that we focus on the right things and we're going to strike when we find that right property. My job here is to advise you, to guide you, help you make the right decisions, and to help you also save money, yeah. right, in the long run. And that's what this does. Do you have a question? Oh, no, no, no. It sounds like you're, like, getting their feelings out of it by showing them exactly. Yeah, because there will be a lot of feelings and emotions that go into, into this, right? But when you can bring it down to, like, a logical process that they follow, it you could get them out of feeling and go back to, hey, well, this is what you guys said you needed, right? This home meets, right? Because sometimes they're scared too. That's the other thing you don't realize is they see the home, but then like, oh shoot, can I do this? How's the market? Can I afford it? Like it's a big, it's a big leap for, for a lot of buyers. It starts becoming real at that point. And then they, oh, we're just going to think about it, right? Or, oh, like we're not in a rush. Not in a rush means I'm scared to make a decision, right? Yeah. And so your job is to like help them not be scared and help reassure them guys that this is the right move for you based off our consultation, based off what you told me you needed, based off what you can afford. You already talked to our lender. You're already approved. You can afford the payment. Like we got to move forward guys. Like it's right. And that's where you give them that gentle little nudge 
to, to get them to write an offer. Okay, so let's break up into groups right now. Um, I'm going to pass this document out. And your job is just to go through what I did, right? Is go over their top five must-haves. And then you're going to ask the closing question. So here's the scenario. Top five must-haves. And then I need you to ask this closing question. Hey, when we find you a home that meets this criteria, we will be ready to discuss the terms for writing a winning offer right? Get their buy-in, right? Now pretend you showed homes, you showed three homes, one's a four, six, and a three. And I want you just practicing going through that dialogue of, hey, what'd you think about this home? What was the score? What'd you think about this one? What was the score? What'd you think about this one? And if anything is five, six, seven, this is now where you're going to say, here's what we need to do next, right? Now you're pushing them to the next step to write an offer. Cool? Go play it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Y